6, verse 10. And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, He shall not shout, uh -oh. nor make any noise with your voice. All right? Neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth hmm. until the day I bid you shout. Then shall ye what? Shout. shout. All right, all right. Let's read verse 16 and see where they're going here. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priest blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, what's that word? Shout. Shout for the Lord have done something. What did he do? Given you the city. Oh, that's good news, y'all. Good reason to shout, isn't it? Can we read verse 20? So the people did what? Shout. Shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet. And the people shouted with a great shout that the wall, what did it do? Yeah. Look how it fell. It fell down flat. You may want to underscore that. So that the people, that's why it fell down flat. So that the people went up into the city. Mm. Every man, not your neighbors, a YouTube, <laughs> straight before him. And they took I'm getting ready to get something I don't know about you and they took I like preaching down here and they talked to me what did they take Lord have mercy Jesus can I go back up to verse 10 and Joshua commanded the people saying he shall not shout nor make any noise with his voice neither any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you shout, then, then, then shall you shout. Father, I give you thanks and pray you cause increase and we're touched by this truth in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to talk for a few moments about get ready to shout. Come on, nudge somebody, tell them, get ready to shout. Come on, look back at them and say, I don't know what you're doing right now. Tell them I don't know what's really on your mind right now. But I need you. Tell them if you're going to sit on this row, I need you to get ready to shout. Now, now, y'all ready already, aren't you? Now, as we journey through this book, I love reading the book of Joshua. As we journey through this book, we see. The promise of God being put to the test by opposition. But beloved, it's a good thing to know that whenever God says something, mm, and especially when he says something is yours, you ought to start looking for it and stick to the plan for whatever he said was the prerequisite for you to get what he promised you. Because every promise of God, I done got happy again, Lord have mercy. Every promise, oh somebody about to get something. Every promise of God is conditional. If my people, that's a big word, if I am, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my faith, then, see that's the implication, if, then, say that, if, then, oh, you're not just going to get any and everything from God by acting any and every kind of way. God has some stipulations to his promises. But whatever he says, I love you, God. Whatever he says, he's able to perform it. Can I get a witness in here? Let the church say what? Amen. Thank you very much. And, and so, 
it's good to know that whatever he's promised, he's able to perform it. And, and though there are diversions and even distractions, we as a people need to understand that God is still able to perform. And he will direct our lives, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. But, but you have to be on ready. Say that, I have to be ready. And the Bible says in Luke 12 and 40, Be ye therefore ready also. For the Son of Man cometh in an hour when you what somebody? Think not. Not your neighbor, ask him what you're thinking about. See, so you got to stay conscious of the possibility of kingdom intervention. I'll say it again. You must remain conscious of the possibility of kingdom intervention. Bishop just told you, and I don't know, I wish he had kind of went on because I was enjoying Bishop. Amen. He just told you that somebody would get healed today. Maybe filled with the Holy Spirit. So when you have this expectation, there's just no telling what God is going to do. And if we're not careful sometimes, we as a people will forget what he's already done. Say that it's possible, it's possible. to forget, forget what he's already done. That's one of the benefits of the Holy Spirit is to bring things to your remembrance. Because sometimes, beloveds, we need to remember how he's already made a way. How he's already brought us out of some things. Come on, being broke ain't new to you. You've been broke before. Amen, somebody. Some of you sitting in here now are wondering how you're going to make it last year. And guess what? You're still here. As a matter of fact, you gained weight, so you ain't been starving. <laughs> I'm looking at something. Don't act like you ain't gained no weight. Come on. Matter of fact, this collar is tight right now. He's still been good to me. Uh, tell somebody he's still been good to me. But, but when you understand and you remember what he's done, then you are conscious or cognizant of the mere fact that if he's done one thing, he can do something like I told you last night, bigger. He can do something better than what you've already seen. Oh, for those that weren't here last night, help them and tell them, I'm next, I'm next, I'm next. That's one of the reasons why, as it relates to remembering, that's one of the reasons why here in Joshua, God told Joshua uh, to tell the people to retrieve 12 stones from the River Jordan. Okay? Because he wanted them to remember what God had already done. You got me? All right, all right, let me, let me bring you back to that. All right, remember uh, when God told Joshua, he told him, he said, uh, I want you to uh, uh, take the children of Israel across the Jordan, right? And uh, he was taking them in a way that they would not gone before. they have been in that region, but they are not traveled this way. Usually they would be looking up at the cloud by day and the, and the pillar of fire by night. But now he says, you're going to look out. Up. Before, now out. Why out? Because you're going to be looking at the priests and the Levites as they carry the Ark of the Covenant, which represents the Word of God uh, or what God has already said. I love that. Thank God. I like that, God. Amen. Say that the Ark of the Covenant represents what God has already said. And oh, you don't even know it, but you, you don't even know it. But what your victory, your blessing is in what God has already said. There's something God has already said that has your healing in it. There's something God has already said that has your breakthrough in it. So he tells him, he says, as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. That's good news, y'all. Because some of y'all need to understand that God likes more than just you. Is that right, somebody? Tell your neighbor, me and God are cool too. Amen. He doesn't just like you, so he says to Joshua, whatever I did for Moses, I'll do it for you too. Come on now. And so he tells him, tell the people to go to Shittim and stay there for three days and then get ready for tomorrow. He'll do wonders before them. And he journeys and takes them as they follow the priests and the Levites. And he tells them to let there be a space between you and it. Too much to preach about right there, though, because sometimes God has a distance between you and him. Why? Because he wants to get there before you. 
<laughs> oh, that's too much preaching. All right. So there's a distance. Sometimes there's a distance. There had to be 2,000 cubits or 1,000 yards, amen, uh, roughly half a mile or so between them and the Ark of the Covenant as they traveled towards the Jordan. When they got there and they were to put their feet in the water, they were hesitant because before, 40 years prior to that, Moses had to part the Red Sea, but he never got his feet wet. You got me? See, you got to understand something, oh Lord Jesus, that sometimes God will do the same thing, but a different way. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Look at somebody and say, you can't keep God in the box. So sometimes he's going to do the same thing, but a different way. Okay, what difference does it make how you do it as long as you get the same results? So, so he says to them, they were hesitant, he says, put your feet in the water. They're like, well, Moses didn't get their feet wet. Put your feet in the water. You got to have some wet feet faith. Come on, talk to me. Sometimes before God will move for you, you got to move for God. You sit up and sing it, come by here, the Lord, come by here. And he said, get yourself on over here where I am. Right? One man was praying, Lord, send me a turkey. It's around Thanksgiving. Lord, send me a turkey, Lord. And he's about to starve to death. Thanks him and come and go. And he changed his prayer. Lord, send me to the turkey. <laughs> because sometimes, turkey, you got to leave the house. Look at somebody say, sometimes you got to get up off your do-nothing and do something. Amen. Praying for members to come to the church. Go door to door. Go house to house. Look at somebody say, get up and do something. And so he says, he says, for them, put your feet in the water. They did so, and when their feet hit the water, notice what happened, that God allowed the water to, to be dried up. But before he could dry the place where they were, oh, too much preaching, but let me tell you anyway. Before he could dry the place where they were, he had to stop the channels that were coming into the Jordan. The Jordan was is fed by roughly about 25 different streams of water, all right? So sometime before God can move where you are, he had to stop what's around you. Oh, you're missing me. See, sometimes before God can promote you, before God can promote you, he has to promote your supervisor. And you hate no folk that's getting promoted in front of you. You don't even know. God's just getting them out of your way. And so sometimes he has to bless somewhere, like I told you last night, he's doing something under the surface that you cannot see. All right? They're standing there, but they don't even know it. Right? As young folks say, you ain't even know it. They, they don't even know it, but, but he has blocked up some places flowing into the Jordan. Tries that up. Now they're walking across. So he says here to them, he says to Joshua, let them go back into the water and gather 12 stones. Why? Take them to Gilgal. Why? Set up a monument. Why? So that you and your children won't ever forget what I've done for you. I need you to nudge somebody and tell them, don't you ever forget what he's done for you. <laughs> Amen. Quit sitting here acting like he ain't done nothing. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. You don't even ask that question like Janet Jackson. What have he done for me lately? He's done something every day. Every day is a day of Thanksgiving. Every time I turn around, he keeps on blessing. I wish I had about 30 folks that would jump up and shout, he's been good for me too. As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. And so it's a constant reminder that he is also blessing others. He's also touching others. He's also moving for somebody else. See, the reason why uh, I'm saying uh, a good time to shout or get ready to shout is because there is a season hmm, for everything. Yes, yes, yes. And I know that some of y'all feel like that, that every day and every time you come to church, you're supposed to be jumping and, and hollering and screaming. But sometimes, it ain't like that. <laughs> there are some quiet times. Oh, Lord have mercy. You might as well tell folks the truth. They're going to find out anyway. But that every day ain't Sunday down here. But sometimes you got some long Saturdays and, and some long Mondays because trouble is down here. We go 